The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and are not those of PESMO Radio, its employees or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements of any radio show programs or products mentioned on air, on our website, social media accounts and marketing materials. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to PESMO Radio, its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing PESMO Radio. Are you a songwriter? Are you looking to turn your songwriting passion into a full-time gig? Whether you are just at the start of your songwriting journey or a seasoned industry professional, this show is made for you. Welcome to The Songwriter Show, bringing together songwriting news, interviews, and community. Now, welcome your host, Sorrento. Thank you for tuning in, and welcome back to The Songwriter Show. I'm your host, Sorantos, a solo music artist who's been writing lyrics for as long as I can remember. Words are very important to me, and that's why I'm thrilled to host this show for you every Tuesday evening. I believe that every song is a story. The Songwriter Show is broadcast live on number one ranked PESMU Radio, and has listeners in all 206 countries in the world and every state in the U.S., the station is also licensed with ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and Sound Exchange, and has partnerships throughout the music industry, including iHeartRadio and exposure to over 300 million listeners. Tonight's guest is Sebastian Lee. Sebastian first found his singing voice while he watched his Grams in her church choir, and then opened his own door to singing when his parents signed him up for the school's choir. Since then, he focused on strengthening his skills by following influences like Carrie Underwood, Kelly Clarkson, Sam Hunt, and Demi Lovato. Sebastian has stood on stages to perform in both live theatrical productions and vocal appearances. Presently, he keeps busy at writing songs and he welcomes collaborations while also posting music videos and reviews all over social media platforms including YouTube, Instagram, and SoundCloud. And now, welcome this week's special guest. Welcome to the show, Sebastian. How are you doing tonight? Hey, good. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for calling in tonight. I'm excited to have you on the show, and I think our listeners are going to have fun with you tonight. Tell us a little bit about how you got started into the world of music or theater or what your first passion was. Well, I actually um, didn't get in, uh, this entered uh, through this until my Graham's church choir, which was pretty much um, when she was doing her like Merry Christmas kind of concerts with her choir. And I had probably uh, maybe five times a year had gone to different rehearsals. And then every time they would just do it, I was so um, interested in all the different sopranos, the altos, the instruments they used. And so I also even got my parents to help me out by getting uh, saxophone lessons, but I uh, could not continue that because my mentor who was doing that, he had to move to uh, Massachusetts where he also even got to perform for Kelly Clarkson, which therefore it became an influence myself too. Uh, but before that, I also was interested in law enforcement, but at the time I had no one really to keep me up to date about the cool stuff, the safety stuff, um, and just what it really means to be an officer. So I didn't have much influence, so it kind of just grew on me to become a singer, be actor, participate in the fine arts um, industry. Wonderful. What was uh, the first instrument you learned how to play? That's a very hard question. I'm good, probably going to say a uh, saxophone, if I'm correct. I remember when I was really little, uh, my grams had a really um, mini piano. I'm not even sure if that's what it's called, but it literally had maybe 12 different keys, and it played like the actual note on there. Um, but I don't know if that's considered me knowing how to play a piano, so I'll probably say saxophone. Okay. And what do you think the saxophone gave you? initially do you think it was something that is a good thing to start with you know most people start with the piano or the guitar do you think gave you an advantage oh that's a good question um i kind of think it helped me understand what it means to feel music um it's one of the instruments that's in can be in any orchestra or music 
performance. It's such a, um, what's the word? Um, versatile instrument. And so it helped me really feel music, understand music, and help me find the right um, key. And so one of my favorite songs I really ever had done with the saxophone is a Phil Collins song called True Colors, which I believe is in the movie Tarzan. And so ever since then, I've always supported the saxophone. I've always looked up to people who play it. I follow people who uh, play saxophone for a living, have gone on tours with like Taylor Swift and done their own concerts. So it still plays a big part. I just can't play saxophone as well as sing at the same time. I'm not that talented. Yeah. I love what you said about the sax, you know, the feel. And it's so true, I think. It really, really is. It's kind of like uh, when you're even playing the piano or maybe even the violin. It's like you're moving with the music and you're like feeling the music, playing the pianos, get the right keys, swaying with it. So it's just that's when you kind of know that you are in tune with it and you're providing the music and you are one. You're combining, you're finding the melody. And it's just a symbolic um, thing for me. Yeah. You mentioned some of your musical influences, but if you could jam with one person, dead or alive, who would you pick? <laughs> um, it's so crazy. I think I would actually go Avril Lavigne because when I was growing up, I kind of grew up with everyone that my brother and sister were listening to. And we would take road trips, and that was the one artist that we all could agree on um, to, to listen to because she had just rock music, fun songs, funny songs. So, and I even uh, listened to Cassidy Pope, and on The Voice, that was one of the musical guests that had ever um, been a guest on there to perform with Cassidy Pope. So, I know all of her songs, I've grown up with her. So that would probably be her, Avril Lavigne, yeah. Okay. It sounds like you've been in some competitions. Yeah, yeah. I uh, mostly started, I think it was in the third grade. I, The first song I actually ever sang in a group was called Elephant's Child. And um, to this day, I've done so much research. I can't figure out where my musical director got in the song. It was such a beautiful song. And I really wish I could remember the whole grasp of the song. But um, I was put at that time, we were all doing, I guess, um, the alto version. And I still couldn't get my voice to match. So I remember that he told me just to do the high version. And then when the lower people came in um, singing, then go to, to match them. But that was the first experience I ever had. And then after that, it was um, in middle school that we started doing um, musicals and dramas. I've gone to, that's when I started my festival when I did um, Dr. Faustus and um, D-Task, which is pretty much just improv comedy or it could be any genre, but I did comedy at that, um, that time. Okay. Tell us a little bit about when you perform whether it's in the theater, whether it's... What's that like? Do you ever get nervous? All the time. It's because you know the moment's coming and you don't know what to do with the energy or you know if you're going to make a mistake or if you have to support your fellow cast members. So nervous, yes, but it's a good one because you know that you're preparing yourself and you're in the zone and you're ready to do what you have been training for so many weeks and so many months for. Um, yes, you get a little sweaty in the hands, but that's just where all the passion is in, in another way of sense. And you perform it to the best of your ability. You help your um, up fellow stage members and you basically just give them the best show you can. And you're really there to tell a story as well as perform for an audience who may or may not know the whole um, storyline. But you're supposed to tell it in your own way. And that's also the fun of it, too. Okay. When you look at the different competitions you've done throughout your career, what was the most fun one you've done? Um, back when I was in high school, I think it was probably the most fun when I was able to perform for the Los Angeles Air Force Base. A um, couple times there were um, holiday breakfasts as well as when uh, soldiers were returning from their deployment. And I had this awful soft spot for them. And so... 
I could not help but just volunteer myself to perform um, doing um, our school songs that we have performed. We did Hallelujah. We've done... um, at that time we were trying my high school had gone to the um, olympics i don't know what year it was but they were opening and we had to learn 25 different songs all in each a different language so we brought some of that music onto the air force base and we were able to kind of give ourselves practice for a live audience for how we were doing there and so it was just an honor And just another way to say thank you for what they're doing. And yeah, you kind of cry, but that's, you know, we have to give our love somehow. Yeah. How do you handle mistakes during a performance? Do you pretend they didn't happen and keep going or do you kind of uh, lose composure or what, what, uh, what do you try to do? I love that question. Um, well, when it comes to acting, it's either seen or not seen, but majority of the time it is seen. Um, if you're really good and you have wonderful cast members, they will act on the mistake and support it. Um, there's this kind of rule, I guess, where if you do something wrong, you still agree with your partner. Therefore, there's no negativity or there's no op- opposites where you don't know what to do. So if you make a mistake, you just support the other person. Um, you react later as if, you know, smack yourself on a hand, give yourself a little shakedown. But um, mistakes do happen. That's kind of error. Not yeah. possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Crap happens, right? I yeah, mean, exactly. Just, and, and the thing that I've found too is most people, I used to really worry about it, but most people can't pick things up anyway. I mean, if you misstep in a dance move, yeah, sometimes they might notice something's a little off, but musically, if you, you know, really screw up and you play the wrong chord and it's at the wrong time, they might notice, but most of the time, these little things that we're perfectionists about, you know what I mean? I found that most people don't really notice stuff. Yeah, I totally get you because it's they're there to like be the entertaining when they get in that zone. They're just there to having fun and they're there to experience it with the people that they're there with. I remember one time I was actually um, at a Jimmy Fallon mini concert and it was actually Carrie Underwood on and she and Jimmy Fallon, I, mean, I don't know if it's Jimmy Fallon or Kimmel, um, but they had made their own little five minute segment song and she accidentally said the words to that. And at the time when I was listening to her, I did not even realize that she made a mistake, but I recorded it. Um, and when I went back to just like relive the moment, I was like, oh crap, she said the wrong words. And then she was laughing with it. And then her background singer was there saying the right words. So they had each other's back. But like in the moment, you really don't realize it and play back. Oh, funny mistake, but you still remember that too. Yeah, absolutely. How often do you practice? I think, uh, oh, practice what are we talking about? You, both. Both. Um, so I actually try to learn new songs, if not twice a week, if not every month. I just get really busy. Um, so I'm doing reviews. I'm trying to always um, get more, what's the word? Um, expand my musical advertisement, different genres, different artists. But singing happens every single day, whether I'm in my car, whether I'm getting dressed for work, whether I'm cooking. Um So every day, and then when I'm really honing in on a song, I'll do it in my car, and then I'll even doing it, practicing as if I was recording it that way, can kind of understand if I want to change something about the song, or if it's just kind of perfect the way it is, and that's the way that kind of works with me and my voice. Okay. What do you think, when you look at what you've done so far in your career, any mistake that you want to share with our listeners that you could go back in time, you'd erase it or do something differently? That's a very good question. I don't think I have really done too much. Um, I could have definitely done a lot more. Um, I was one listening to one of your podcasts and I just ran into a lot of scams majority of my life, which had discouraged me for uh, most of my uh, career, which has why there's such a big gap between my, um, early life to like right now. But I would say just watch out for scams. Um, but don't let those really distract you from pursuing it outside the cameras. You can still do it, record yourself, listen to good music, 
it's not you're not going to get right away but you can still do what you love heck when i was um before i went off to college i was going in my garage every day turning on all these lamps i got um astroturf put that up with nails in my garage and i was just singing pretending i had a stage um so that's how i did it and kind of coped with being scammed and being hurt is just singing it and recorded myself yeah it's tough because you know we've all been there and that is one of the reasons i like to ask about scams because We've all fallen for it. And Pam, one of the listeners, is asking a question, you know, why do people fall for scams? And I think part of it is we're indie artists and we fall for it. You know, we believe when someone says, hey, for 100 bucks or 50 bucks, I can help you with this or that. Obviously, unfortunately, some people fall for the expensive stuff, too. But I think you learn very quickly that when people promise you stuff, it's just not going to happen. And we all want to make it. So I think sometimes these scam artists prey on that. Right. And they're also um, preying on the fact that you'll change your mind or you'll think it's a different experience because that's literally what happens to me every time. I always think when I get a direct message on Instagram and they say, if you want to promote this item, we'll promote you. And I always fall for it in good faith, thinking that this person is actually doing what they say want to do for a good reason versus just trying to get our money. When I was my first uh, scam back when I was, you know, just leaving elementary school, it was um, a talent agency and they wanted um, five grand up front. And so it was hard for my parents to decline that because they knew how much I wanted this. But when we sat down, looked at it, how much I really wanted it, and I was so young and getting into it, I said, I have more time. I can do this. I'm not going to put my family in this situation. And yeah, it, it's it's out there every day, and I'm still still learning, really. Yeah, I think we all are, and that's why I think protecting one another and helping each other is key because some of the listeners out there are songwriters, and again, I hear you, I feel you, I've fallen for it myself. We want it to be true, but, and let's be honest, even legitimate people, legitimate managers, legitimate they know how to play the game, and they sometimes take advantage of people in other ways, too. So it's not just about these scammers that promise you Spotify listeners and that they're going to help you go viral. It's a tough, tough situation. It really is. Yeah, and you've said it on a previous podcast, you just think, make sure you do the research, make sure you really want it, have the time for it. And hopefully if it's meant to be, which you know we all want it to be, it'll happen at some point when it's the right time. And the people who really, really want you, they have the best interest for you. Yeah, one of our listeners, Alex, is asking specifically, I kind of briefly mentioned Spotify. There are a million people out there promising you that they'll help you go viral on Spotify and Apple Music, and those are kind of the, the juggernauts right now. So when you sit there and you think, oh, for 100 bucks or 200 bucks, again, the problem is a lot of this stuff is fake, then it skews your data, and you getting a bunch of followers or listeners in Turkey or Bangladesh does not help you at all. It makes us misinformed because then you think, wow, I'm starting to go viral. Hey, my song has got traction. And there's nothing more disheartening than than being misled, I think. Right. It's, it really breaks your heart, making you feel like you have what it takes. And then when it's fake, it's like, okay, you don't seem like you have real talent, real skills, what it takes to be in this limelight for doing what you're passionate about and what you want to influence the next generation for. And it's... it kind of feels like it should be a, an illegal kind of move in a way because you're dealing it's cruel and it's heartbreaking like i said but some people see it as a business some people see it as a chance to you know make themselves say that they've done this and this give them experience it's just um i, I think it's growing is just as much as the entertainment is growing they're finding new ways to scam and new ways to make things that they good marketing i guess is what it is yeah well, and that's the double-edged sword, right? Because we know that money talks and we know that the average single by a major label, they put a million to two million behind it at least. So we know that that's how they get in front of ears and that's how doors open, but we don't have that. So we're trying to make do with smaller budgets and we're trying to find unique ways to get our stuff out there. But that's the double-edged sword. Marketing does work and you do need money to get your, your stuff out there and in the front and center. So that's the dilemma. 
Absolutely true. I remember um, uh, my brother is a Celine Dion fan, and how she got her big break was, I believe it her his her husband's name is Renee. Um, he spotted out the money to get her first album out, and yeah. without his help, she would have been where she was before. So, yeah, he was so a, true. He was a super. He had all the connections. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're at the point in the show here. A couple of things. We're going to listen to your song. Give us a minute about your song. What inspired it? What made you want to send this to us tonight for the audience to hear it? Well, I uh, mostly do uh, song writes or writing songs um, every day. Whenever I kind of just get in the mood, um, I'll figure out the lyrics and then I'll just like start singing them. And then I've been working on this uh, for quite a long time. I actually have like a um, in the progress mini series called um, Ryan to Ryan, a glimpse and this one was literally just me um, going from, I think it was college or high school going to college. And it was just like a totally new, fresh start. So this is about dropping all the labels that I've ever had and dropping about who I think I am and just letting life hopefully support me and be what I want to become and just be free. That's what it's called, actually, breaking free. And um, it's a little bit different. I would I would uh, play it a little bit differently, but it's still kind of like an anthem from my younger self to my adult self. Awesome. All right, Sebastian, we're going to hear your song right now, and then we'll come back and talk about it, okay? Appreciate it. Hope you all like it. All right, here we go.
Very cool, Sebastian. So the one thing I usually get to in the beginning of the show, which I didn't, but I'm going to ask you now that we've heard your song, how do you start? Is it the music? Is it the sax? Is it the lyrics? Is it the melody? Um, how do you get started when you're making a song? It's really, all, to me, all about feeling. Um, if I'm really, really sad or something big has happened, um, I technically just go by that feeling and find words and then I just kind of put them together. I really don't work on a chorus verse or um, a verse. It's just really the words, and when they come together, they don't. And then I'll start singing it and find if I want it to be slow or happy, sad. And that's just like my whole pr progress of how I do things, and that's how I've done it with all of my songs. And I uh, most of my songs are... Um, kind of on the sl sad low end only because that's when I really noticed that I had the so much in my head, my heart and mind going on that this was like the best way for me not to go to prison for one or to punch something. And um, that's probably what has to do with my, my mini series. And yeah, that was my answer. Sorry. I went like way no, that's over. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> how, how important is image in this business? I'd say it's at least half of it. Um, whether you're, you know, a goody two shoe or whether you're rock and roll, that is basically how you're defining your music. If something bad happens to you, then everything in the past is in the past. And we create new is maybe like a redemption or it talks about that tragic event that has happened to you and changed you. Um, but that's also why you have a team who are good at PR, marketing, you know, sets you up with all the shows that you're going to do and like what music goes onto your album. So tell us a little bit about that. Do you have a PR firm? Because that's something everybody wants. Everyone wants a manager, a PR firm, but obviously they cost money and we don't have the numbers where they're going to come work for 10, 15 percent. So how do you approach that? Uh, so I actually have a degree in communications and emphasis in PR. So, um, and my specialty, one of them is actually Instagram. So I've done background, um, searches on all this stuff. That's not, it's not background searches, just, uh, searching actually. And I've realized how to, um, market myself, kind of get myself out there. When I was younger, when I started out, I actually did um, through Facebook and I did like $5 and that $5 got me 130 followers. But of course I can't always do that. So it's just really now about um, being constant at what you're doing, um, having content that is to the audience and viewers liking sadly um, because they are the people that are going to come back maybe even bring other people with you but um, I think hopefully staying to who you are and always building up from where you what you're doing is going to be enough PR to have people versus having to hire someone for you because yeah not everyone can do it like you said so hopefully you're good enough and you love what you're gonna do enough to put so much time into it yeah no absolutely what do you think is the best way to grow as an artist for example instagram facebook if someone came to you and said hey i have 50 bucks or 100 bucks what's the best way to grow what would you answer oh maybe trying to just get yourself um tutorials about one instruments and to figuring um getting um 
whether it's online or physical sources about the people who have been where you've been and learn from them. I, um, when I'm doing my music reviews and my reflections, I always kind of go to, uh, like what's the websites, um, 200 charts, the billboards, all the music sites that say, these are the top artists. I listen to them, expand my knowledge and figure out, um, what they did, how they started. Some of them mostly started on TV shows, um, like Fifth Harmony, they got on X Factor, Karen Newitt and Kelly Clarkson both got American Idol. But other people, they just, um, like Taylor Swift, she started in this really small town, was performing live in small cafes, and she just kept on trying with CDs that she made herself and sent them to industries. I'm not sure which one of them are, but um, that's what you do. You learn how they do it and see what way works for you, what's at your disposal at the time, and continue that and then hopefully you'll find someone or you can just keep on going i even know that sean mendes he got discovered i think through vine which doesn't exist anymore but that's how his potential was and then justin bieber got scouted out through youtube yeah everyone's always looking for the next way to get famous Mm -hmm. yeah do you have any suggestions for them Uh, To get famous, if you're doing it just to get famous, you're not doing it for the right reasons. This should be something that um, is in your heart, that it's in to do. Technically, you should be doing it until you retire or until you die. Um, But if you're doing it to get famous, then there's other ways. And you're, in my opinion, taking the chance away from someone who got a guitar at seven years old, took singing lessons, you know, took mortgages out from their with their parents to go move to New York or Los Angeles to do what they know that they are willing to do. Yeah. And I think I answered your question, but I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes two of us, man. I'm just kidding. What's your ideal superpower? If you could pick a superpower, what would you pick? Well, my favorite actually is Flash because he's, he's so fast and I feel like I, that's what I need. I need to do so much at one time. Um, but I also love Batman because everything he does to help people, he has smart gadgets, yes, but it's himself doing it. So he doesn't have the, the lasers. He doesn't have the uh, awesome swimming abilities. It's just him being the hero and maybe using his brain by making all these gadgets. So yeah. I would just love myself to be that instrument. Yeah, that's true. If you could pick one genre of movies for the rest of your life, what genre would Crime. I love crime. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Who's your favorite person to follow on Instagram? You said that's your main uh, social media. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I kind of, I kind of grew up with um, this YouTuber named Tyler Ward, and I kind of feel like he is in my steps. He started out writing his own music. He's actually really, really good. He has over one million on YouTube. He's on Patreon. He's on Facebook, and um, he followed his heart. Um, grew up in Denver, and then at some point moved to Nashville, and that's where he is right now, making his own music. And so I find him to be an inspiration. Um, I don't follow too many actual singers because I want to be influenced by the people that not are my ranks, but are just people that I can follow and understand what they're doing this for. So definitely um, Tyler Ward music. That's, I think, his handle everywhere. Um, other than that, um, Leo Leroy Sanchez, he's also really, really good. I love actually uh, Megan and Liz. They're a country duo. They're twin sisters. And I'm also a twin, so that's why I kind of also had a connection there. But they do covers. They do live performances as well and um, make their own music. And they've been to the CMT Awards. They've met Carrie Underwood. So um, I just find their music and all of their natural voices are just beautiful together, organic. And it's refreshing, really, to hear. Yeah. Do you have any cool touring plans once the virus embargo lifts? Unfortunately not. I see myself staying simply as busy as I am. I have a day job. I stick to my computer making videos. Um, I'll probably be doing more videos than ever because right now I'm just stuck at home and um, not much has come out lately. I just um, did a video on Kelly Clarkson's I Dare You with her global virtual performance. And then just today, she actually released um, the American Sign Language, which I kind of know. So I'm really getting into that. And then I'm looking forward to watching Demi Lovato's um, collaboration with Sam Smith. I know that came out like a week ago, but I'm kind of behind. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. 
What things do you not like to do? I cannot handle sitting around the house and doing nothing. I feel like I have to do something. I'm a little OCD as well. Um, but I, I, I don't know what else I don't like to do. I, I, yeah, that's a really hard question. Maybe doing something illegal. Um, I actually don't like cussing. I feel like it's a verbal war that we can also just stop and help make you know the world a better place. We have already so much like bad in the world. So my friends, my coworkers, my family, I'll say just the word language and they'll give me the stink eye, but they know I'm a passionate about it. So they'll be respectful of who who's around them and they'll not stop. And then I just like to be um, one of my classes in college. Um, I became really specific about my language and who I'm talking to. So when you're being disrespectful with your language, I kind of find that to be a problem too. Yeah. It's funny, as you're saying that, uh, one of our uh, listeners, Tessie, she uh, texted in a note, and it's, why the F exclamation exclamation does he not like cussing? <laughs> 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 so she's trying to be funny. Tessie, that's hilarious. Yeah, I, um, so many people are not on my side about that, but that's um, what makes yeah, me I, special. I think she's just trying to be funny, man. That I, I love when people, I'm very sarcastic, and when people have a great sense of humor like that, I kind of love that kind of stuff. That's hilarious. I'm around so many people. I kind of consider myself like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory. I can totally deliver a sarcasm and like everyone laugh. But when they take it me or give it to me, I'm like taking it personal because I like, oh, my God, I just made them upset. I did something wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I go all overboard trying to make it better. I get annoying. I get irritating. Oh, boy, I'm so sorry. But yeah, Tessie, thank you for uh, lighting the load. Really yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> Is there a certain day of the week that's your favorite? I think, oh, gosh. I kind of like Monday because that's when everything is fresh and motivating to make sure everyone is smiling and happy. I'm really chipper. I'm almost too chipper, actually, that people that know me are always annoyed about it. Like, I'm always smiling, always happy, always laughing. And they say I have too much energy. And so I think on a Monday, Tuesday kind of days, I use that a lot after I've had, like, maybe three cups of coffee and spread that around. Okay. Tell us about a time when things didn't go the way you wanted. In what sense? In any sense, musically, artistically, and what did you do about it? Oh my goodness. Uh, probably when I was in school, in my high school choir, I was doing a cover of Rascal Flatts' What Hurts the Most. Good song. And I know, and I hope I didn't, um, like, you know, not do it justice, really, honestly. Um, but everyone was actually in my class saying they love that song, and I think that's how we kind of have to prove, or not prove, but um, in order to do the recital, we had to sing in front of our class. And did it fine just then, and when I was singing that song, I actually forgot the words and I had the background vocals to help me out for the harmony and they literally helped me figure out where I was in the song. And so that's just kind of like what we were talking about when we messed up, you yeah. get the help. And so thankfully, whoever made that track really helped my performance as I was back on board. I got to tell you that to me, I know in the past people would have cue cards or they have teleprompters. I think what I would love if I ever make it huge and I have to consistently... I've written so many songs and I remember the words, but if you have all these songs and if you're doing covers and sometimes it's hard to hit every chord and every note. I think the easiest thing is just to have a backing track in your ear, in your one ear, your left or your right. Because this way, if you're listening to yourself, say, it's, you're less likely to forget it. And if you forget something here or there, you just throw a dot or a, you ad lib a little bit. But yeah. to me personally, that would be my crutch. I would love to just have either if it's my song, my vocals in one ear, that way I just, I feel like I would never forget it, you know? Oh yeah, tell that's happened to me on stage so many times. One of the musicals I did, uh, was, I think it was called Once on this Island, and I literally just could not hear my cue for the piano. And so I went up to the director and he, they just said, tell the pianist to look at you. And that's how the only way I could really know what my cue was, because that was the start of the song. Yeah. And also to like change from like scenes. That's but. tough. That's tough. <laughs> I, I I did a show when I I could not really hear anything either, but it makes it challenging when you can't hear. So anyway, 
We're almost done with our time here. Can you tell me, please, your contact information, your website, your socials? Where can people hear and buy your music? Where can they get in touch with you? Yeah, sure. So I'm most active on YouTube and Instagram. Both those handles are Sebastian Lee Music. They also can find me on uh, Facebook and Twitter and SoundCloud, um, Sebastian Lee Music. And then I think for Twitter, because it has like its character restraints, I think it's Sebastian L Music. And that's where I am post weekly, just because uh, it takes time to work, get your art out there. But that's where I am. Perfect. All right. It was a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for being on the show tonight. Definitely. I appreciate you taking your time to let us kind of speak our love about music and everything. You're very welcome. So to any listeners out there who may be artists or no artists, if you want to be on the songwriter show, please simply just reach out to me either via email or social media. I want to thank everyone for listening. I want to thank you for your comments and the love. I hope everyone's unique story gets heard around the world. My name is Sorantos. Please join me next time to hear other amazing artists share their fascinating behind the scenes stories right here at the Songwriter Show. And tonight I'm going to leave you with the song that I released in November, which coincidentally is my birthday month. The song was called Friendless. I released it on my birthday, which was November 4th. Back then, I basically had a great weekend. I had a great day. My mom took me out to lunch and we had a lot of fun. Nostalgia and sentimentality were everywhere and they both made us feel great. When we left though, my mom backed up into my car <laughs> and even though she felt terrible and it was still a soothing day, I told her not to worry about it because at the end of the day, who cares about material things? And that got me into the topic of friendship. Friendship was a the theme of this song you're going to hear. Friends are important, aren't they? Unfortunately for those of us that are workaholics, sometimes friendships take a back seat. The song was inspired by someone telling me that I had no friends and all I did was work all the time. And I thought, well, that might be true. I do work a lot, and I don't have as much time as I once had to go out. But please don't mistake this for not wanting to go out, not wanting to relax or kick back or have fun. I do. And so I wrote this song called Friendless, and it has a twist ending at the end that I think you'll enjoy what direction the song goes. And this one was all about me, my piano, and my exasperated vocals. So I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you again next Tuesday night. Everyone have a great night. Thank you, and I love you all. At 40, I am friendless. A life built around work. My wife loves me but doesn't understand me. My kids think I'm sometimes odd I've always been the box That needed to be unlocked My dream was always to understand The key you're screaming in woe To never wear a mask to be whole To my own soul Excuses, obligations, always met Never left the troubled trenches I've always been the one Learning life's lonely lessons My dream was always to understand The key you're screaming in woe To never
Once a lonely number But through the many years I carried the strength of my dad So I was never alone Thank you for listening to The Songwriter Show. To keep the momentum going, head over to www.songwritershow.com and join our free music community of artists, songwriters, and producers. That's www.songwritershow.com. Thank you for choosing Pesmo Radio.